Here's another good one. Uh, I know, Dave, you can help me on this one. How do you interpret the Z and X parameters on a rig expert? Um, yeah. X is the, it will be your reactants. And Z, I believe, is your resistance. Z, Z is the impedance. Impedance, that resistance. Impedance. And X yeah. is your reactance. Yeah, and R, R is the resistance. R is the resistance. Correct. Yeah. And the way you know um when you're when you're looking at um when when you're when you're looking at your meter your swr your standing wave ratio is usually a function of the um the impedance versus the react it's, you know or the it's, deviation it's deviation the of the it's the impedance relative to 50 ohms. Yeah, that's what I was that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. The impedance yeah. that's relative to the 50, 50 the 50 ohms because that's your the expected load for your your, your transmitter's expecting that load. So when yeah. you deviate from that, your 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 SWR, your standing waves are going to increase. Now yeah. your X um when your X approaches 0, that's your reactance and um what you might find, is, what you'll usually find when that happens, um, as the X reduces, um, your lose, you know, your um, load becomes more resistive. More resistive. Yeah, when it's yep. down to zero, it becomes purely resistive. You're dumb, um, and then, but your impedance may not be at fifty ohms. It could be somewhere else, but because the because and that so you might still see standing waves, but if you've got a purely resistive load, your antenna is going to be at or near resonance. So you actually are running at 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 it's the antenna's most efficient state at that at that point in time. Yeah, um, yeah. Like make it simple. The resistance are the good guys, and the reactants are the bad guys. Yeah. So, so the more reactants that you have in your antenna, whatever, whatever it is, mm -hmm. the more reactants is the is less efficient because it's not real. You consider it to be not real power. Yeah, it's and uh, so so in the design of an antenna, the reactants is generally to be avoided, but mm -hmm. it's a it's a necessary evil. When you're dealing with an antenna that's not resonant, so, correct. So when you're using your 17 foot vertical on 80 meters, you have to introduce some inductance, which will show up on your meter as reactance, mm -hmm. well, in order to get that impedance to be somewhere around 50 ohms. Yeah, it's a compromise that that, that you're making willingly. Yep. But, yep. But as a general rule, reactance is best minimized. Correct. And yeah, it, and if you can, yeah, if you can do that, and when you get a purely resistive load, you know, you you should have a res you should have a resonant antenna. If you don't, and, and then your SWR, you know, if your your impedance may increase, so your SWR might increase, and that's okay, um, because for example, a half wave dipole antenna. Its characteristic impedance is um, 70 ohms, and that could show up as an SWR of 1.4 to 1. But if your reactance is or your is X is next to zero, you know there's it doesn't the SWR really doesn't matter at that point because you're you're at resonance. Yeah, your efficiency is high. You get a little bit of loss in the coax, mm -hmm. but but your antenna is is super efficient. Super efficient, absolutely. That's why I don't sweat SWR. <laughs> you know, if it's I it if it's if it's up, you know, 1.4, 1.5 to one. It's I'll I'll look at my I'll look at my X, what my reactance is. If my reactance is low, I'm happy. If my reactance is high and my SWR is high. You know, then you know maybe I need to do a little bit of adjustment, but um, but yeah. otherwise, yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's a, a common misconception because uh, most people think that a dipole is fifty ohms, but mm -hmm. if you actually have it at resonance, and most people aren't 
when they're looking at their antenna analyzer, all they're focused on is the VSWR. That's okay. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But if you're, <laughs> if you're if you're really looking for zero reactance, you're going to be surprised to find out that the impedance of that dipole is you know 73 ohms or 75 mm -hmm. ohms. And yep. likewise with your quarter wave vertical, it's going to be of somewhere in the mid 30s, you know, 35 yeah. ohms. Which, which again will create some VSWR uh, panic when you look at it, but but that's zero reactance. Zero reactance, yeah. You know, it's if um, a money saving tip if you've got a dip, uh, you know, a monoband dipole and um, it's resonant, you can save a little bit of cash by using seventy five ohm um, cable television line instead of. <laughs> <laughs> 50 ohm feed line and you you know um the it, it'll it'll match it'll match the um the, it'll, the match, characteristic. it'll match the antenna perfectly the transmitter yeah. won't like it but uh, yeah <laughs> well it's still but still <laughs> it's <laughs> um you know it's uh it, it, it it'll it'll help it'll it'll, it'll help with your efficiency <laughs> All right. Well, we must have done something right because it's it's we we've demystified be, um, demystified Carla a little bit better. So that is great to hear. So. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpol-antenna.com.